This is episode number 163. In general, I think social media is bullshit. Why? I'm going to tell you. That's coming up. This is the Red Podcast. How to take your idea and make a name for yourself within your industry and beyond. Spread your message. Attract a following. Rise above the noise. Here's your host, David Hooper. Remember when Laurel was on the podcast? Great co-host. Episodes came out like clockwork, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And on every episode, there'd be some witty banter. That is no longer. Episodes are becoming more sporadic. Still pretty regular, at least once or twice a week. But it's like a slot machine. You never know when it's going to hit. Certainly not consistently Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And all I've got for you instead of witty banter is a funny story telling you how disconnected people have become. I was in a bathroom washing my hands yesterday. I was washing up and behind me I hear, hey, what's up? I think the guy's talking to me. Turn around. He's at the urinal taking care of business with one hand, making a phone call with another. Dude is so busy, can't catch a break even to go to the bathroom. And that's how things are for a lot of people, not only with phone calls, but with social media as well. I find it interesting to see a group of people eating together, not having a conversation, not really even eating, but texting, taking pictures of their food, being totally engulfed. And that's what this episode is about, how to be a leader with social media, how to use it effectively, but not get taken in by it and let it run your life. This is the Red Podcast, the podcast for influencers. If you're a blogger, speaker, podcaster, marketer, nonfiction author or an entrepreneur trying to spread a message. This is the podcast for you. The focus, how to take your idea, make a name for yourself and make money. My goal is to make you the go-to guy in your industry and beyond. Let's talk about big picture social media. I've got three big reasons to use it. I want to show you how to do that. How much is too much to share on social media? That's a line that we see crossed all the time. When is it TMI? I'm going to talk about that. Also give you some signs that Facebook may be a problem for you or somebody that you care about. Let's jump into mindset first. A lot of people don't like social media. For this reason, they completely avoid it. I've found that this is usually for one of two reasons. The first one being that it can be a huge time suck. Just like the people that I mentioned earlier, you've got a guy with a mobile phone attached to his ear, can't even take time to go to the bathroom without using it. Or you've got a group of people that's together And you would think enjoying each other's company or at least enjoying the food that they're eating feels like they have to broadcast it to people who aren't even there. Social media can be a huge time suck. And if you're somebody who actually likes time alone or if you're somebody who likes spending time with others, if you're someone who enjoys those things, but you're constantly worried about what everybody else is doing, that can be a problem. And to me, That's where it seems to be a time suck. Number two, though, and this is a huge one, is just the overwhelm of so many things changing. If I were to put out a dummies book of all the social media applications today and show you how to use them, it would already be out of date. Things come, things go. It's like a hip club. What starts out is all the cool people, all the teens, the tweens, the people that are the first movers on social media. They leave once the people like me, the middle-aged guys, their parents, grandparents, Once everybody else comes, these guys have already gone on to something different. So it can be overwhelming if you're trying to keep up with that. So what's the solution? One, get focused. Know why you're using social media. I'm going to talk about that coming up. Two, pick one or two social media applications that you enjoy using, that you feel comfortable using, that you understand. Focus on those. There is no need for you to be everywhere. You don't care about the latest trends that teenagers are setting unless you happen to be marketing to them. In that case, it's a different story. You don't need to be where the old people are. Go where the people that you're trying to reach are and do it in a way that you understand and that you know they are going to understand. In the end, you need to remember that you are in charge. This is not the outside world that's coming into your world. It's your world that you're sharing with the social media world. You're in charge. If you don't like a certain application, don't feel obligated to use it. The most successful people in business that I know don't check email, don't do social media. They think it's for kids. So you can be completely successful without jumping into any of this. 
Three big reasons that people use social media. One, direct contact with people. If you've listened to Red Podcasts, you've heard me say, reach out to me on Twitter directly at David Hooper. If you want the podcast feed, it's at the Red Podcast. This is a way for me to reach out to people who listen to Red Podcast, the people who know me from other things that I do, and be able to get quick messages from them, just 140 characters, and respond in kind with a 140-character message and do it very quickly. It's a perfect way to do that, but I'm not going to try to keep up with 10,000 people on Twitter. You can't do it. It's a way for me to keep in touch with people who already know me, that want to get in touch with me, and want a direct response. That's how I use Twitter. Remember, you are in charge. Use it however you want. Don't feel that you need to read everybody else's junk that they're broadcasting out via some kind of bot. They're not giving you the time of day by even logging in and giving you a personal message. They're putting it to a bot and expecting you to keep up with that. Don't feel like you need to do that. Use it however you want. Just look at the reply box. If people are sending something directly to you, reply to it. If you don't want to mess with anything else, don't do that. And on that note, if you don't want people to be able to contact you via Twitter, don't get on Twitter. For me, though, nothing better for one-on-one communication. It's a quick, short message. It forces people to be succinct. It's so much better than an email, which can back up and back up and back up. I might not get to emails for three or four weeks, and then it's a long-winded email. People don't get to the point. Twitter is much better for that. It's the one social media tool that I would suggest people use, and that's a great way to do it, just one-on-one communication. You don't need to read everything everybody else is doing. So number one of the three big reasons that people use social media, maybe one of the reasons that you would like to use it, direct contact with people. Number two, staying on tops of people's minds. And this is the reason that people will get bots and keep posting to Twitter and keep posting to Twitter and keep posting to Twitter or post every little thing that they do on Instagram or get on Facebook and reply to every single thread, give a status update about everything that's happening in their lives. You can do that, staying on tops of people's minds. But I want you to think about that. Are you really trying to reach the person that's staying on social media all day? Or do you want somebody who's progressing? Do you want somebody who's the type of person that's going to consume your real content, your podcast, your blogs, come to your live events, purchase your products? Think about that. There are a lot of people that are very, very popular on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, but don't have real businesses. These people may be at the top of somebody's mind when it comes to a Facebook feed, but are they at the top of that person's mind when it comes to advice, when it comes to paying for consulting, when it comes to downloading a podcast? Maybe not. So is staying on top of people's minds worth it? That's a question for you to answer for yourself. Here's another big reason, and this is going to apply to you as an influencer. You want people to see you as a leader. And when it comes to staying on top of people's minds, what I'm talking about, about kind of doing the play-by-play of your life, saying, oh, I'm in a Lamborghini today. Oh, here's my office. I'm in first class today. Have you ever flown first class? It's really great. Here's the kind of food that you get, and the stewardesses are actually nice to you. That's what I call showboating. This is my life. This is my house. Let me add a third thing to it. This is shallow. Yeah, you want to show people that you've got an exciting life, but if that's all you're doing, People start knowing you for that and not what it is that you actually bring to the table. There are several internet gurus. I've written about them on 23hours.com. I've talked about them here on Red Podcast that I have absolutely no idea what they do. They are the Kardashians of the internet world. You do not want to be the person posting the photos, posting the status updates where the person receiving them has no idea what you do. That's a nice ego stroke, but you cannot deposit an ego stroke in the bank. So think about that. You want people to see you as a leader simply showboating? That's not going to do it. The best way is for you to use social media to actually interact with someone and help them. Interact with people and help them. That's so much better than showing people that you're flying first class. That's so much better than showing people that you drive a nice car. That's so much better than showing people that you live in a nice house. All that is great. But if you want money, if you want to be considered an influencer rather than someone who's just popular, this is not high school here. This is business. Start helping people. That's a much more effective way of getting that kind of reaction. Never, ever 
get on social media just because everybody else is doing it. Again, this is not high school. This is business. You need to know your specific reasons for getting on social media. I'm going to give you three. One, bigger email list. You want a bigger email list? Being able to reach out to more people directly in their inbox? If that's the case, when you get on social media, you need to think about that. Will this post of me driving this fancy car, me sitting in first class, or me working from this hotel, get me a bigger email list? Number two, more clients. You can utilize the email list to get you more clients, but will those social media posts get you more clients directly? Maybe, but you've got to make sure that you've got a plan and you're directing the people that are seeing these messages into some kind of funnel, some kind of path to where you can actually acquire them as a client. Maybe you're a coach. You want to give more introductory calls, get people in for a free coaching session so they can see you work, see how you help them, and then ultimately hire you on as a coach. Well, in that case, you need to think about that. More listeners. If you've got a podcast, that's another big one. Bigger email list, more clients, more listeners, more sales for your book. Think about that before you get on social media. It should never, ever be simply random photos just to make you look like a big shot. That doesn't work. Think about the big picture. And let's talk about TMI, too much information. This is how it happens. We've all seen these guys and we had some respect for them. Maybe it's somebody that wrote a book or maybe somebody that we heard about or saw speak. And we get on social media and we see craziness from them. They're talking about their past, their marital problems. Too much information. It takes it away from the purpose of you going there, which is to possibly do business. And I want you to think about this on the receiving end of that. Somebody coming to you because he or she wants to do business with you and you're giving out too much information. So here's why this happens. It can kind of sneak up on you. There is a lot of pressure to make everything look like it's great on social media. This is the new generation's way of keeping up with the Joneses. You've got a green grass. Your neighbor's grass is greener. Well, better install some sod of some super green grass. You've got a car you're perfectly happy with. Neighbor comes in with a nicer car. Well, time to upgrade that car. You're having a party. You don't like your TV. Better upgrade that TV before the party starts. You want to put your best foot forward. And this is compounded by social media. And a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about, the first class flights, the nice cars, the nice houses. Look, if I'm sitting in coach on an airplane, I'm walking right by first class. It's super easy for me to take a selfie in first class and then tweet you or Instagram you or Facebook you and tell you how great first class is when I'm not even paying for that seat. It's super easy for me to walk by a car and say, yeah, this is my car. Just have somebody take a picture of me in front of it, send it out everywhere. It's a total facade. Big house, you don't know if the guy's living in that big house or not, if he's just standing in front of it. It is super easy to have a fake life online, and we see a lot of people doing that, and because so many people are doing that, we start to think that it's normal. There's a lot of pressure on us to make everything look like it's great. That's not what causes people to step up with the TMI, though. Facebook did a study, and they have found that the emotional health of people declines when being ignored. Not a surprise, right? But on social media, because we can put out so many things, and because the half-life keeps getting less and less, there's more of a chance of you being ignored. Everybody's shouting in the room. Nobody's really listening. Everybody's posting their first class photos, their house photos, their car photos, not looking at yours. Have you ever put up a post online, something you thought was really witty, maybe a funny joke or something you felt was important that you wanted to share with neighbors or friends and had it completely ignored? Have you ever responded to a post, had it completely ignored? Everybody else gets a like, but you don't get that like. You don't get a response on your post. You post a great photo. Nobody's paying attention to it. Well, your emotional health is declining every time you're being ignored. You're feeling more isolated. You're not feeling fulfilled. And here's what happens. It's like keeping up with the Joneses, but instead of you buying that new car, getting that new grass, getting that new television, you start ramping it up with the sad stories, with the tales of woe and your marriage and how bad things are, how you used to be bad and now you're good. And you start ramping things up by sharing too much information. There's a funny episode 
of The Simpsons several years ago. Homer Simpson is hired to teach a marriage workshop, marriage advice at his local community college. And people are coming in, and he's the teacher, and he's giving marriage advice, and nobody cares. Then he says one thing about his wife, something personal. Everybody starts to care. Pretty soon, the whole class is him telling secrets about his wife. And after that, he's got the class coming to his house, watching him have dinner so he can share these intimate moments with the class. It's very titillating, not very helpful, though. And that's what I'm seeing from more and more influencers, bloggers, speakers, podcasters, authors. They keep sharing this intimate information, hoping that they're going to get that hit. And you hear these stories, oh, I was down and out, I was a down and out drunk, blacked out one night, woke up 20 hours later. I was almost dead. I was in a pool of my own vomit, found a copy of Think and Grow Rich. I read it. I turned my life around. And if I can do it, you can do it too. They say things like that. They talk about their marital problems, just like Homer Simpson. They talk about getting off drugs, getting off alcohol, other addictions, and how if they can do it, you can do it too. I was so unhappy in my job. I quit. I did it. Now you can do it too. It's kind of like a humble brag in that it's just trying to get attention. You get attention, but like any social media, it fades away quickly. People are on to the next thing, so you've got to do something else to get attention. And you keep stepping it up and stepping it up and stepping it up. So think about this the next time you post something. Are you doing it for a specific reason? Do you want a bigger email list, more clients, more listeners? And is this a way for you to do that directly. If you look at the real influencers, not these fake gurus that are coming online on Facebook and Twitter, anybody can do that. Act like they've got that great life with the car, the first class, the house. Anybody can do that. But look at the real gurus. Look at the guys where you can really verify that they're successful and they're really having an impact on people. I'm talking about the Seth Godins of the world, the guys that have been around for a long, long time. Do you see them engaging in this kind of behavior? You do not because they are busy making money They're busy impacting people. They're busy, not on Facebook, but writing new books. They're busy delivering their message in person on the road. They're busy actually doing things that help people. So thinking about that, with all this said, let's look at this. Answer this question. Does social media really matter? Social media is very tricky. You can post that nice car. You can post a nice house, the first class photos. You can post the story about how your marriage used to be so bad and now you fixed it. And now you're somebody that everybody should listen to because of that. But social media is extremely tricky. You've only got a few people following you. When it comes to the big picture of the world, when it comes to all the people out there buying the information that you deliver, the podcast, the books, the speeches, You've only got a small piece of that audience. It's easy, though, with social media, when you've got hundreds of likes or a lot of comments and a lot of interaction, to think that you're actually reaching people. But there is a huge world outside of social media. I ran into a guy a couple weeks ago, and this is a dude who's killing it when it comes to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Tons and tons of followers, hugely popular blog, He's reaching a lot of people. He's helping a lot of people. And I told him, I said, hey, man, you know, I think you could really do this thing. I think you could go and get yourself a major deal with a publisher. I think you could take this even larger than on the Internet. I think you could get into broadcast radio. I think you might even have a television show. You've got a lot of talent. He had no clue. He had absolutely no clue. He goes, what? What? You You mean I'm not already doing that? No. There's a big world outside of social media. We used to say this in the music business. Don't believe your own press. Well, don't believe your own follower count. Don't get caught up in these numbers and the interaction that you're having. I've talked before on here about a guy that I know, very popular on Facebook. A lot of people that love him. A lot of people love his content. He's looking to move some furniture, needed to borrow a truck. Could have done it with U-Haul, but he needed somebody to help him move a sofa. Crickets. Everybody's going to like his pictures. First class, big house, nice car, good-looking lawn. Everybody's going to comment on how great that is. But when it came down to actually helping the guy lift the couch and put it in the back of a truck, uh uh-uh, nobody's interested. Social media is tricky. The interaction that you're having, it's not real-world interaction. 
I know a guy making about $40,000 a month right now, no social media following at all. All his sales, non-social media outlets. The most successful people I know, they're not even on it. You talk about Seth Godin, Dan Kennedy, a lot of the old school marketing gurus. Those guys aren't using social media. And yeah, they're already established and they were established in an old world. And guys like Seth Godin are using the old media, books, other forms of media that he's established a long time ago. But even a lot of the new guys that are doing well with books, they're not big social media guys because that's not how connections are made. Connections are made face-to-face, not via the internet. The internet is a good introduction. It's nice to know when you go to a conference, you might have met someone online, maybe via social media, maybe elsewhere, that you've got some kind of background to connect with them just a little bit just to get that face-to-face connection jump-started. But it's the face-to-face connection itself that really forms a connection. And if you've ever been to a conference, and if you've ever spent a few days with someone, you know what I'm talking about. The person that you met at the conference is the person that you can call up and ask to help you and get advice from and get time with. That's where real connections are made. That's the reason why when somebody goes to a live event, many times, He won't even look at who the big speakers are, at who the sponsors are, who's at the trade show. He only cares about the people in the audience. He only cares about getting connected with people he can develop a real connection with because that's how relationships are built and that's how businesses are built. Last couple of episodes, Red Podcast 161 and 162. To listen to either of those, just go to redpodcast.com slash 161 or slash 162. People connect better in person. That's why somebody will book a flight book a hotel room, get on a plane, fly across the country, speak for an hour, stay a night in a hotel room away from family, away from friends, away from everything he knows. Get on a plane, fly all the way back, taking at least two days, maybe even three to do a simple presentation because that's how connections are made. You could pick up the phone, give the same presentation, but it's not going to have that kind of impact. People connect better in person. So if you're overwhelmed by social media, feel like you're not on it enough, forget it. It doesn't really matter. Use it however you want to use it. You could be like me going directly with people on Twitter. Post a few photos just for family and friends on Instagram. Have an account just for your family and people that you really know on Facebook. When it comes to business, yeah, there's an upside to social media, but it can also be a huge distraction. And if it's a distraction for you, don't get caught up in it. Don't let it keep you from doing your work, coming out with the podcast, writing the books, preparing the speeches, delivering the speeches, reaching out to people face-to-face. If you've got questions, you've got comments, reach out to me. I'm online via Twitter at David Hooper. Feel free to send me something there. I'll respond to everyone who writes. And if you want to follow Red Podcast there, it's at The Red Podcast. And speaking of getting one-on-one attention, I've got something called The Red Insiders. If you go to redpodcast.com, It's your opportunity to get on the phone with me, just you, me, the other Red Insiders. I will help you to grow your business, reach your bigger audience, have more influence, and make more money. It's at redpodcast.com, and it is absolutely free. Thanks so much for listening to Red Podcast. If you like what I'm talking about here, tell a friend. That'll help me spread the word. Appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Red Podcast. You've been listening to Red Podcast, real entrepreneur development. Subscribe today using iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS at redpodcast.com.